In an ideal world, there wouldn't be much, if any, danger, but this is pretty much the opposite of an ideal world, and today we're going to take a look at the evil people who have been terrorizing our planet for the past few decades. From the public face of a terrorist group to a cigarette smuggling psycho, let's meet the 20 most dangerous people in the world. <sighs> Number 20. Abu Bakar Shikau there's a special place in hell for anybody and everybody who even considers endorsing, supporting, or participating in terrorist groups. But if you happen to be the leader of one of these groups, you're going to find yourself in an even more special part of hell. And no, that's really not a good thing. Abu Bakar Shikau was the public face of Boko Haram, a Nigerian Islamist militant group, for many years, he served as a deputy leader to Muhammad Yusuf, who founded the group up until his execution in 2009. At the time, the authorities believed he too had been killed, but no, just one year later, he appeared and claimed leadership over the group. <laughs> From that point on, his reign of terror erupted. One particularly nasty incident, some taking credit for the kidnapping of over 200 schoolgirls who were forcibly converted to Islam for the next few years, Shikau would be considered dead, but of course he was never dead. In fact, he probably knew who was reporting these claims. He allegedly had a photographic memory. That would be impressive if he wasn't, you know, a psychopath. On May 21st, 2021, it was officially reported and confirmed that Shikau had been killed. According to the investigation, Shikau had killed himself by detonating a suicide vest. One month later, his surviving followers confirmed that their leader had finally fallen. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. It's time for the rare topic. Now just take a moment to catch your breath. You are about to meet someone truly frightening. This is the most dangerous person in history. Legend has it that there's a mysterious man in the Siberian forests. During World War I, the man was so badly disfigured by chemical warfare that he wrapped himself in bandages and eventually escaped to the Siberian forest. Some say he was so disfigured that he is now an immortal vampire-like creature who stalks anyone foolish enough to venture into the Siberian forest. But that's just a legend. And what do you think? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Makatar Bel Makatar. When you're dealing with someone nicknamed Mr. Marlboro, you know that it's going to be an interesting story if nothing else. And yes, Mokatar Bel Mokatar's story is indeed interesting, even if you only focus is on the fact that nobody even knows if the guy is still alive. Bel Mokatar's extremism began after the 1989 killing of Abdullah Yusuf Azam, a Palestinian Islamist ideologue. Bel Mokatar was so outraged that he traveled to Afghanistan at 19 years old to train with Al-Qaeda. From there, his sinister reign of terror began. Thanks to his part in cigarette smuggling rackets, he earned the nickname that would come to define him, and for the next two decades, the guy masterminded a number of suicide attacks, even with just one functioning eye. It wasn't long before the US government began looking at him as one of the most dangerous people in the region. Unfortunately, Belmokatar has also been described as uncatchable, and he has a tendency to live up to that reputation. Despite being caught in what must be at least three airstrikes, Belmokatar has never been confirmed dead. Nothing has been heard from him in 2015, so it's likely that he's long gone. But without official confirmation, nobody can know for sure. Number 18. Cody Wilson 
What's one of the most dangerous inventions of the 21st century? Say it with me now, 3D printing. Yeah, while most people are happy to use 3D printing for good or for cosplay, some people have much more sinister intentions. Cody Wilson is a prime example of one of those people. Cody Wilson, an amateur gunsmith and member of Defense Distributed, is working on producing the world's first fully 3D printed gun. The post-political right, or however you want to call it, the post-left, you know, these are the only people actually attempting to. Wilson's plan is obviously controversial. When the company that leased him a 3D printer realized what he was doing with it, they sent people to his house to take back their equipment. Wilson has been questioned by authorities who believe that his plan to create guns with 3D printers violates federal law, but the bigger question raised by the so-called WikiWeapon project is what happens when everyone can just print their own guns. Guns? Answer, chaos. Democrats have vowed to pursue stricter gun regulations in the wake of a controversial 3D printed gun model, arguing that it's critical to keep deadly weapons out of the wrong hands. And they're not wrong, Cody Wilson may be the first of many tech geniuses looking to help dangerous customers get their hands on guns. And that's bad news for all of us. Number 17, a con. On December 11th, 2003, a group of CIA and MI6 officers climbed aboard an unmarked plane. But before they even stepped foot onto the plane, they were handed six brown envelopes. The agents had been in Libya negotiating with officials. When they opened the envelopes, they found what they were looking for, plans for a nuclear weapon. The weapons were designed and provided by Akan, a man who was once described as the world world's most dangerous man by a CIA director. <laughs> The director in question also described him as as least as dangerous as Osama bin Laden, and yet the man who helped spread nuclear weapons to some of the world's most unstable regions was honored by his homeland, who saw him as a hero. However, in reality, A.Q. Khan was a nuclear spy operating to provide nations without nuclear weapons with the technology they needed to build them. And come on, who needs another unpredictable nuclear power? We're already dealing with like six. Khan eventually died, of course, but his legacy remains. His work was instrumental in arming some of the world's most dangerous regimes, North Korea, Pakistan, and Iran, just to name a few. Even today, his work continues to pose a very serious threat to our safety. In this case, dead just couldn't stop the terror. Number 16, Qasem Soleimani. What makes a terrorist a terrorist, you might ask yourself? The answer is pretty easy, actually. Terrorism, duh! Qasem Soleimani more than deserves his place on our list because, well, he was a psychotic terrorist who wanted nothing more than to cause absolute carnage. General Qasem Soleimani was pretty much the right-hand man for the Iranian head of state, Ali Khamenei, a tireless fighter. Soleimani lived to stoke conflict wherever he possibly could, to provoke and fight all of Iran's enemies, and he did just that, which is why to the war World, Soleimani is a terrorist and an insane, terrifying figure. But to Iran, he was a hero looking out for the people of his country. However, in 2005, Soleimani was officially designated by the international community as a terrorist. And just over a decade later, President Trump decided to pull the trigger and take Soleimani out once and for all, assassinating him with a drone strike. But while the decision was met with joy and excitement around the world, the Iranian community was less thrilled because of Soleimani's strong cult of personality. Iranian nationalists didn't react well to the news that their beloved and tireless hero had been killed by an American president. But for many, one less terrorist in the world was pretty sweet. Number 15, Marlory Dadiana Shakan Russell. 
On the surface, you would not think a so-called society lady would be a dangerous figure in the world, but we have to take a little step back and think about the context that surrounds Marlory Dadiana Shakon Russell. She's not just a society lady, she's a crime wizard. First of all, Marlory operates out of Guatemala, one of the world's most lawless places on the planet. She's surrounded by some of the most dangerous and frightening cartels in the world, but she's very much a criminal in her own right. Marlory is known as one of the most prolific narcotics and drug traffickers in Central America. In early 2012, the U.S. Treasury froze her assets, noting how she's been responsible for moving thousands of kilos of cocaine throughout Mexico and into the United States every single month. Her work may be headquartered out of Guatemala, but it's much more extensive. She has additional operations in Honduras and Panama, all of which keep the Mexican cartel supplied, alive, and happy. So we should maybe reconsider the whole Queen of the South society lady image. She's the kind of woman who could easily order you to be murdered and still keep her reputation intact. Number 14. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi I don't think we have to say too much about how brutal and horrific the Islamic State is. Their actions make it very clear that they are a violent, inhumane collective. And who was at the head of that brutal regime for five years? Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Baghdadi was the first caliph of the Islamic State. Before then, the group was nothing more than a branch of Al-Qaeda. And when the group permanently broke away in 2014, they needed a leader, and Baghdadi was chosen to be the first caliph of the new caliphate. And what happened next was entirely expected. Baghdadi over saw one of the most brutal regimes anywhere on the planet, encouraging and organizing mass violence, executions, and genocide. And not only did he encourage it, he was known to actively take part in many of the violent incidents inflicted upon innocent people. In October 2019, President Trump approved a military raid targeting ISIL. Baghdadi was present at the scene as U.S. armed forces stormed the place, but he was unwilling to allow himself to be captured. Instead, he killed himself and two children by detonating a suicide vest. Despite the loss of their first caliphate, ISIL remained focused, naming a replacement and continuing as usual. Number 13. Anna Chapman now, we're covering a lot of genocidal maniacs on this list, but we're now going to take a little shift to someone more inconspicuous. At first glance, you probably wouldn't suspect this woman of being an internationally wanted criminal. Well, guess what? Yep, more than meets the eye. This woman is Anna Chapman, or as she's also known, Anna Vasilyevna Kushenko. She's a media personality, a model and, uh, oh, a Russian intelligence agent. Yeah, in 2010, Chapman unknowingly fell into a sting operation orchestrated by the CIA. Pretty soon, she was arrested and accused of espionage on behalf of the Russian Federation. After the case went to court, Anna didn't dispute the claims. In fact, she pleaded guilty to conspiracy and was deported to Russia as part of a prisoner swap. Anna did, however, want to return to the United Kingdom thanks to her UK citizenship. But having witnessed the espionage saga, the UK Kay revoked her British citizenship and excluded her from returning. Since the deportation, Chapman has lived and worked in Russia in multiple areas. She's been a TV host, a magazine editor, a writer, although plagiarist might be more accurate, and allegedly she's continued to take part in her spy activities. Well, I guess everybody needs a hobby. Number 12. Semyon Mogilvich the Sopranos was made up. The Godfather is also fictional. Semyon Mogilvich is neither of those things. He's very real. Mogilvich is a Ukrainian-born crime boss, considered by law enforcement to be the highest authority in most of the Russian organized crime groups. 
And that's not great for anybody who doesn't want to be murdered. Semyon Mogilevich is a Russian businessman who the FBI believes is the head of an international borderless crime syndicate. His illegal enterprise is believed to deal in everything from drug trafficking to nuclear trades to contract murderers and even international prostitution. Mogilevich has owned over 100 fake companies in 27 different countries to avoid paying taxes and to make sure that his income doesn't get held up. And if you're wondering how this guy keeps getting away with all this, well, he's been friends with international tyrant Vladimir Putin since the 1990s. Yeah, that'll do it. In 2008, Russian police arrested Mogilevich in connection with suspected tax evasion and money laundering, but three years later, charges against him were dropped altogether, possibly with the help of Putin and his cronies, and he's been a fugitive from justice ever since. The FBI has had him listed as a most wanted fugitive for decades. Will they ever get him? Time will tell. But when you've committed as many crimes as this guy, you know they'll do their best. Number 11. Anadina Arellano Felix we often talk about Mexico as one of the last places on Earth where the Wild West is still alive, but this next entry is really gonna hammer home how insanely criminal the place is. We're about to meet Andina Arellano Felix de Toledo, one of Mexico's most notorious drug lords. And Adina is a drug lord who founded the Tijuana Cartel. Alongside her six brothers, throughout the 90s, the Tijuana Cartel was a group effort led by the brothers. And Adina's role in the cartel was purely advisory, responsible for money laundering and financial guidance. But when the big money mastermind fell in 2000, and Adina took over full time. She stayed in that role until 2008, at which point her brother got arrested. Without a head of the cartel, and Adina took up the role as the cartel leader, a role that has only expanded as the rest of her brothers have been killed or arrested. Today, and Adina is a fugitive from the law, but she's still responsible for the management of the cartel and its financial state. Thanks to her incredible wealth of sinister contacts, she's somehow managed to keep the cartel afloat for over a decade. Networking is important everywhere, apparently. Number 10. Fulan Devi it doesn't matter where you live, any place with a class system will inherently be riddled with inequality. If you're a working class person, it's never going to be easy to climb the ladder of life. Fulan Devi knew all about that. She was, after all, the bandit queen. Devi's early life was difficult, to say the least. A lower class woman, she survived poverty, child marriage, and domestic abuse. Then it all somehow got much worse. Devi ran away from her marriage to join a gang of bandits, but everything went south, ending with her suffering an unimaginable sexual assault ordeal from a rival gang. When she finally escaped, Devi joined another gang and orchestrated her revenge on the people that tormented and assaulted her. But when the two men couldn't be found, she rounded up 22 upper-class men from the same village and demanded they be murdered. Naturally, reactions to the incident were split, with some believing that the massacre was a disgraceful event. Others, however, had empathy for Devi, believing that she was a simple, working-class woman struggling to survive in a hostile world. Eventually, Devi was arrested and charged with 48 crimes. She went on to become a politician before she was assassinated in 2001 by someone outraged about the massacre. Number 9. Ayman al-Zawahiri when Osama bin Laden died in 2011, many people felt a great wave of relief, but residents of the region knew that there was no reason to celebrate because someone else would readily step up and take his place. And indeed they did. The man who eventually took over was Ayman al-Zawahiri. Terrorist Ayman al-Zawahiri is the current leader of Al-Qaeda, a position he's held since June 2011. He's the man behind terrorist acts planned in Asia, Africa, and some across North America and Europe. In fact, Ayman al-Zawahiri once called for his followers to kidnap Western tourists visiting other countries. In 2001, he was listed as one of the FBI 
Sky's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives and has been on the U.S. Most Wanted list ever since. The U.S. government is offering a $25 million reward for information or intelligence on his whereabouts. Aiman, who is considered one of the most dangerous at-large terrorists in the world, has evaded capture and brought death and destruction to many innocent people. While we don't know the details, I think it's pretty obvious that the U.S. government is doing their best to track him down and bring an end to that reign of terror, but can they succeed? That's a question for smarter people than me. Number 8. Maria Lisiardi Everybody knows about the Godfather, but who among us even knew there was the Godmother? Meet Maria Lisiardi, an Italian criminal that any true crime fan should know about. In fact, she's probably one of the most successful and feared Italian criminals of all time. So you really should know about her. Born into a family of criminals, it's probably not a big surprise that Maria turned out to be another crime lord, but it was a surprise to discover just how powerful she would eventually become between 1993 and 2001. Maria Lisiardi was one of the most powerful crime bosses of the Camorra Mafia. Her rule over the clan turned out to be one of the most organized, sophisticated, and lucrative rackets in crime history. Unlike her male counterparts, she preferred to hide away from the spotlight and work behind the scenes, earning the respect and goodwill of all the those she worked with. Of course, when your job is in the criminal underground, goodwill and respect is very important. After all, one bad move and you're quite literally sleeping with the fishes. And if anybody knows something about that, it's going to be the godmother, right? Number 7. Omar al-Bashir Give a man power and you'll see who he truly is. That quote is as true today as it's always been. I mean, just think about how many world leaders turn out to be tyrants or, at their most extreme, war criminals. One of those people, Omar al-Bashir, the former head of state of Sudan. Between 1989 and 2019, Omar al-Bashir was the head of Sudan, but as I'm sure you know, he didn't get there by democratic means. In fact, he staged an elaborate coup that pushed out the democratically elected leader and allowed him to take power. From there, he began committing all manner of atrocities, including mass killing, sexual assault, and pillaging against civilians. The whole purpose of his rule was to contain and quell unease or rebellion in the population by any means whatsoever. However, Omar al-Bashir's reign would never last forever. In fact, it ended pretty much the same way it began. In 2019, Bashir was forced out of office in a military coup, hoping to get rid of him for good. The news Sudanese government took steps to hand over Bashir to the International Criminal Court to answer for his war crimes. I think we all know how that's going to end for him. And not well. Number 6. Samantha Luthwaite in the Western world, the expectation is that you should support and love your spouse no matter what. But any rational person will know that there are exceptions to the rule. Like for instance, if your husband is a terrorist, probably shouldn't support that. Samantha Luthwaite is a British terrorist. In fact, she's one of the most wanted terrorism suspects in the world. Experts believe that she's behind multiple orchestrated attacks, both planned and executed, but she's also known to have surrounded herself with questionable people. For one thing, her husband was one of the terrorists behind the 7-7 bombing in London. Because of her connection to him and her own history, of terrorist activity, the British press eventually came to name her the White Widow, which honestly is probably one of the better creations of the British press, all things considered. Currently, Samantha Luthwaite is still at large and on the run. In Kenya, she's wanted on charges of possession of explosives and conspiracy to commit a felony. But internationally, Interpol are on the hunt for her arrest. Will they ever be able to get there? We'll just have to wait and see what happens on that one, but I think we all know that it's inevitable. Number 5. Ismail Zambada 
you would think that El Mayo would just be an easy way to order mayonnaise in Spanish, but no, my friends, El Mayo is actually the name of a suspected drug lord. In fact, he's one of the most prolific international drug lords in history. Ismael Mario Zambada Garcia is the alleged leader of the Sinaloa cartel, one of Mexico's most notable international syndicates. Before he took over the entire cartel, he was in charge of coordinating logistics, which sounds like one hell of a challenge. After all, we're talking about a cartel that has trafficked cocaine and heroin into various US cities in just about every way you can imagine. Aircraft, rail cars, buses, boats, tractor trailers, you name it. I guess when you're smuggling illegal drugs, you have to get creative with how you go about it, right? At present, El Mayo is on the run from the authorities, although they're doing their best to track him down. The current reward for his capture is estimated to be around $15 million. That's not a bad profit if you're, you know, willing to potentially die tracking down a notorious drug lord. Number 4. Kevin Mitnick it's always so disappointing when smart people get sucked into a life of crime. Kevin Mitnick was an indigenous child who just happened to grow into an adult with a bad habit. That bad habit was not smoking or scratching his genitals in public. It was hacking. At the age of 12, Kevin Mitnick got a bus driver to tell him how to buy a bus punch. He then used that punch to ride any bus in Los Angeles for free. But then Mitnick escalated his criminal enterprise. While still a teenager, he started hacking into computer networks. Mitnick used information stolen from his friends to break into a computer at Digital Equipment Corporation and steal the ARC software designed to develop operating system software. In 1988, he was finally convicted and sentenced to 12 months in prison with three years of supervised release. After his supervised release was finished, Mitnick went back to hack Hacking, Mitnick hacked into Pacific Bell voicemail computers and fled the police. He was an on-the-run fugitive for two and a half years. During that time, he allegedly gained unauthorized access to dozens of computers, cloned cell phones to hide from the police, and copied proprietary software from some of the country's biggest companies. He's still considered one of the most prolific and dangerous hackers that ever lived. Number 3. Joseph Coney we're now going to go all the way back to 2012, when the Stop Coney movement was all the rage. At that time, most people outside of Africa had absolutely no idea who the heck Joseph Coney was. But thanks to one viral documentary, people quickly began to learn about his horrific actions. Joseph Coney is the founder of the Lord's Resistance Army, a Christian fundamentalist organization in Uganda. But don't go thinking the group is just some peaceful community preaching the word of Jesus. No, no, they are terrorists. Coney has long described himself as a freedom fighter, but his actions have earned him a reputation as one of the most notorious warlords in all of Africa. Some of his worst crimes include the abduction of children to become child soldiers and sex slaves, actions that destroy any image of a peaceful Christian preacher. Over the past decade, Coney's force has shrunk significantly. So significantly, in fact, that officials in the US and Uganda have stopped hunting Coney down. To them, the threat of both Coney and the LRA is pretty much non-existent at this point. Was this all thanks to the 2012 Coney documentary? Probably not, but I'm sure the people behind it will take the credit anyway. Number 2. Jeffrey Dahmer by this point, anybody with even a passing interest in true crime or serial killers will know almost everything there is to know about Dammer. He was, after all, one of the most notorious murderers in history, and even that feels like kind of an understatement. Between 1978 and 1991, Dammer was responsible for the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys, but it went significantly farther than that. He was also known to be in 
into necrophilia, cannibalism, and even preserving leftover body parts. The guy was truly one of the sickest humans to ever walk the planet. It's not too surprising. A full psychological exam on Dammer found him to have multiple psychological disorders. However, despite using all of this as his defense, he was found to be legally sane at his trial and sentenced to life imprisonment, which I think we can all agree is pretty much the bare minimum of what you would want for these kinds of crimes. On November 18th, 1994, Dammer was murdered in prison. A fellow inmate bludgeoned him to death with a metal bar and later claimed that, God made me do it. Dammer's mother did not take the news well, but it seems the rest of the world was indifferent or happy. That tends to happen when you murder a salt and eat a bunch of people. Number 1. Matteo Messina De Nero for our viewers who aren't familiar with the world of Italian comic books, maybe it would help to give a little bit of context for this next one. There is a comic book character named Diabolique. Ah, that's uh, all the context you need. Now let's meet Diabolique. Matteo Messina De Nero is a Sicilian mafia boss, so you know you should be afraid of him, right? But he's also known as Diabolique, a nickname he got from the comic book since 1993, De Nero has been high on the list of Italy's most wanted criminals, and Forbes have defined him as one of the ten most wanted criminals in the world, but as yet he remains uncaptured. In fact, he's currently viewed as the unchallenged Capo de Capi, a boss of all bosses, within the Italian Mafia. If the Godfather exists, it's this guy. Today, the Italian authorities continue the search to find him. Social media reports have led them to conduct manhunts all over Sicily and Italy nationwide in the hopes of capturing the guy. They've all failed, of course, but the government remains hopeful that success is just around the corner. We'll have to wait and see, but having seen the Godfather movies, I'm not optimistic. Which of these people do you think is or was the most dangerous? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!